Hey guys, today I wanted to share a rare uh, genus of carnivorous plant that you don't see too terribly often. Most of you have seen a sundew at this point, but there are other sticky plants that um, have flypaper traps like that. And one of them is Rorigula gorgonias. And that's the one I have here in my hand. This is actually a baby plant, so they can become like a carnivorous shrub, getting like four, five, maybe six feet tall on long, woody stems. And then they have these um, green growth points, kind of like a palm tree at the end. They're native to South Africa, kind of coastal South Africa, um, similar in climate to where we have here, mild, wet winters and uh, drier, hot summers. And then they're close to the oceans. They have that fog that comes in in the summers that um, keeps them a little bit extra moist. We have that here too. It's one, kind of a rare thing in the world. Um, the other thing that makes them different is sundews and bibulus and pinguicula, the other sticky plants. They use a mucilage, like a water-based glue. It's more kind of like saliva than it is pine pitch to hold the bugs to their leaves. These don't have that. These actually have like a pine pitch like glue. So even the old leaves stay sticky. If you get it on you, it's really gross. You, usually you can wash off sundew mucilage pretty easy. It's slimy. But this stuff, you have to get rubbing alcohol to take that off. And they can be just covered in insects that get stuck in that resiny glue. You can see all the tiny, tiny little gnats all over this thing. We even find feathers. We don't get too many birds in the nursery, but every now and then a little sparrow or towhee will find its way in through an open door. And weirdly, we almost always find feathers stuck to the rorigula. They're so, they're so sticky, they pull the feathers right off the birds. Um, another thing that sets them apart is they don't do their own digestion. One of the qualifiers to be carnivorous is digestion. That's what sets things apart from like a defensive plant, like a tomato that just catches a few bugs on the leaves. But if a plant can trick an animal into doing it for them, it will. That's one of the things I love about plants is they're all about saving energy. And so in this case, all those struggling insects in the wild, there would be an, um, an insect called an assassin bug um, or a spider there's a spider that lives on them too, that have co-evolved to live with the rorigula, and they're able to walk across these sticky leaves without being caught. Now these other bugs obviously can't do that. So those assassin bugs and spiders, they're gonna eat the insect and then poop on the leaves. And that's what makes the fertilizer available to the plant, which is just another really cool process. Some people think things like that make these plants less carnivorous, I think they just make them more clever. Just carnivorous has gotten a little bit smarter, a little bit more clever. Um, I think that's all there is to know about these, except for they're pretty hard to find out there in the world, and they're a little bit tricky to grow. Nobody's really probably starting with Rorigula as their first plant. It's even hard to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is a really interesting, fantastic plant, and I was super happy to share it with you today.